Good evening. You're listening to The Voice 99.9 FM. Up next is Arcane Saints Alone. Play it loud. Good evening and welcome to Cat Unwrapped. Thank you again to Lou for two hours of, well, Lou. <laughs> Dancing around the studio and having a ball. And... We just heard a song from Arcane Saints, and that was Alone, and I'm joined live in the studio by Michael from Arcane Saints. Hi, Michael. Hello, Kat. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm splendid. Thank you for asking. You, you must be on a bit of a high at the moment after doing the big day out on Friday. Yeah, it was, I was on a high for a good 24 hours there after we played, and not just playing, but seeing some amazing bands and just the whole atmosphere and everything, but the the, the Sunday after, so two days after, I was back out um, washing trucks in the heat, so I kind of got thrown back to earth down very, qu- <laughs> <laughs> very quickly. But you have taken washing trucks, that's the second job for you, isn't it? Yeah. Because you've got big plans for this year. Yeah, it's just more of a hobby, it's something I like doing in my spare time. <laughs> <laughs> Standing on the highway spraying the <laughs> Yeah, <still>. pretty much, yeah. <laughs> now, you're going to America, aren't you? Yes, yes, that's that's why I've got the two jobs at the moment. Yeah, trying to rapidly save up cash because it's just kind of sucking our money at the moment. So, yeah, doing everything we can. What do you plan to do when you get there? Because you've recorded the album just party last year over there. We're just going to hit Vegas and we're going to... Sp- Put all oh, our, you are not. Put all our collective earnings on like <laughs> black or red and then just try and really hit the jackpot. <laughs> um, no, we we just um, would, well, as I mentioned last time when we spoke, we are about to go on tour over there with the band that I still can't name yet. <laughs> it's still being ironed out. But yeah, it's just getting really expensive with all the, the visas involved and our management fee. Because obviously the dollar doesn't work in our favour, the American dollar to the Australian dollar. So, mm. you know, so yeah, it just all adds up. So we're just working really hard at the moment. Mm. So you've all taken second jobs no no i think it's just me at the moment but i already had a lot of debt from when we went and did our album in nashville so yeah i think i'm a bit worse with my money than the other guys (laughs) they're better at saving and stuff so is there a hope that one day you guys can actually relocate to america yeah i mean we're definitely not opposed to it yeah right now we're just focusing on getting over there for the tour and just seeing what's going to happen as a result of that and our our us management but i mean i think realistically depending on what happens we'd probably have to relocate at least temporarily, you know, there's a few bands going over there at the moment. It would definitely help our situation, save a lot of money in the long run with airfares and, and things like that. Mm. And yeah. you can actually make a living in a band over there. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty lucky over there because all you've got to do is have a van and just drive. You know, you might have to drive for a long time, whereas we're kind of disadvantaged in Australia and New Zealand that you've got to fly all the way over there for, you know, two days just to get there. And then you've got to worry about the visas as well. But um, the visas we're getting are valid for a year, so we'll definitely try and be back there after the tour, whether it's for another tour or perhaps recording another album. We'll just see what happens. And this US management deal you got, that's what set up this tour for you with the mysterious band that you cannot name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although I can't name them at the moment because there's a two or three in the in the, in the the mix. So it's just a matter of the time timing and, and a few other factors. But yeah. That's all I can say about that <laughs> right now. <laughs> I don't want to jinx it or anything. <laughs> That's yeah. all right. Yeah, but our management over there is working pretty hard. And it's over there, it's just all, it's not based on merit. You know, it's not like uh, one of the big bands is sitting there going, you know, I like this band. They've got a cool song. No, it's just all relationships and it's all who your manager knows and people who, who uh, he's done favors for in the past and vice versa and pulling strings and all that. So it's, it's all that kind of thing. Ah. Oh. So it helps to get a manager over there. If you can get one, yeah. We tried really hard for years. But again, even to get a manager, it's all who you know. And we're just, we're, it was always in the back of our mind. That was our reason for going to, to Nashville and spending a month there and doing an album with, with an American producer because we knew it would make inroads into the American market and industry. Whereas we could have done it for a lot cheaper with a, an Australian producer, but it wouldn't have given us the, the right sort of contacts that we wanted to break into the US. Mm. So that was part of our plan to go there and, and meet the right people. And lucky enough, it's paid off so far in the fact we've got US management, which is great, but it's also really... Really expensive and um, and now we've got these other tour costs and the other costs involved as well so it's kind of never ending really yeah. and, we're, and we're still paying off the album so so what management <clears throat> over there doesn't work on a you know 15 20 percent you have to pay them up front no no I, I, I don't know if they still do that anymore but no it's just a monthly fee now but then on top of that if you want radio play you've got to pay for things like radio campaigns and and yeah any extras involved obviously if you tour if you tour with a big name band as well they'll often charge you a, a fee just to, for the privilege of opening for them and playing to their fans really yeah 
Yeah. You have to actually pay them. Yeah. Yeah. It's paying to play pretty much. Depending and it depends the amount depends on how big name or big draw the band is over there. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of bands, you know, in Australia at the moment are complaining about what the openers and that get paid by bands and how small it is. But Yeah. Over there I think that's you know, the sort of the big names over there, but they you know, that's it's big names that aren't really massive anymore, but they might have had like a really big hit in the rock scene, you know, in the late, uh, or, you know, maybe like five, ten years ago or something, you know, but they still have, they've got a, a draw, they can still get, you know, 750 to 1,000 people to each show at least, and they're still a household name, but they're still not doing great with sort of record sales and things like that, so I guess it's just another way of them making money, is, you know, let's let's have two or three bands opening for us and then we'll charge each band kind of thing, so. But that's something that's wrong with the industry as a whole, is the fact that yeah. bands starting out have to pay for everything. Yeah. It's, it's an it's expensive hobby. Massively wrong. Yeah, but it's yeah, it's but it's the it's what it, the music industry is at the moment. You know, over there, it's in a, especially for rock bands, it's in a it's in a really bad way. So, and it really does beat <clears throat> washing trucks in the long run. <laughs> yeah, well, it's an I guess you got to see it as an investment, and also the bigger crowds that you play to, the more merchandise theoretically you sell. So you can hopefully make a big chunk, if not all your money back, just with merchandise sales. Yeah. Yeah. We should put on one of your songs right now off the album. All right. We'll play Hard to Please. Let's play it. This is Arcane Saints. Stick around. And we are back and I've still got Michael John here with me from Arcane Saints. And what was it we were just listening to? We were just listening to a band called Arcane Saints (laughs) and the song was called Hard to Please, which was also going to be our first single in America very soon. Did you release Hard to Please as a single here? You did, didn't you? No, it's it's our first single over in America. And the one we released over here was Your Ocean, which is a little bit softer. But Americans like the sort of harder rock. Mm. Oh, well, you know, well, a lot of us Australians do too. Yeah, well, <laughs> shall I say American radio is, is more kind to... Uh, uh, let, let me start that again. American mainstream radio is more kinder to... Rock. To the, the heavier rock, whereas the mainstream radio over here is not so kind to the heavy rock. Definitely. Yeah. Something we have to alter. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So write your local MP or your politician and and um, organise street marches, whatever you need to do. I... Blackmail people, yeah. bribe people. And you do have the album out at the moment, Turning the Tide, and we should actually tell people to go to your Facebook and check you out, facebook.com forward slash Arcane Saints. I don't think I've ever asked you the name Arcane Saints. Where did that come from? Arcane, I just liked the word. I liked the um, the meaning of it. it was kind of mysterious and unknowable, and it's kind of how I really liked music, sort of. I don't like music to be too in your face. I like music that you've got to sort of listen to a bit deeper and try and figure out what they're saying and what the hidden message of the song there is and things like that. So I really liked Arcane and then Saints was just a good word that sounded good next to it, basically. (laughs) Arcane Saints. (laughs) Did you have the band before the name or did you know you wanted to start a band with the name Arcane Saints? Um, No, I was in a different band in... Uh, New Zealand, and then we, uh, I moved over here by myself and started up a new band, so I just wanted a new band with a new name. Kind what of made you come here? I'm still trying to figure that out. I don't uh. know. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no just, uh, it's just, New Zealand's just too small, it's just a really small country. Yeah. So, you know, the population of Melbourne or population of Victoria in one whole country, so there's literally about two places to play in Auckland, which is the biggest city, so after about four or five years of playing the same two places, you kind of get a little bit bored and want to play a third place. So, <laughs> so, You'll yeah. be saying that when you move to America, saying, yeah, the size yeah. of Yeah. Well, I mean, the way, the, the way they're shutting down you know, venues over here is going to be two places to play in Melbourne pretty soon as well, which is pretty sad. But yeah, Melbourne's just just much bigger, much bigger scene. And, mm. Yeah, Some great musicians over here. We've got a, you know, I was really lucky to, have a, to find the guys that are in the band now. And yeah, and I've got some family in Melbourne as well. And if the weather's a lot better. Speaking of the guys in the band, you did just replace your drummer, drummer, <laughs> your drummer recently. Yep. Was it the you know whole America thing in that that the other drummer didn't have the commitment to go to America? Um, and- yeah, I think part of being in a band is it's just really hard work, and and being away from home it can be really tough. And we sort of noticed with his. Uh, his commitment was sort of wavering towards Arcane Saints, and we went and we went to Canada for about eight days, 
and he was just really seemed really sad all the whole time and not excited to be away from home at all and just wanted to be back home and we're kind of thinking oh you know if it's going to be eight days it, you know how's the month long tour in the USA you're going to go with him but in saying that we never would have kicked him out of the band or anything but we're kind of in in some sense really sad but also a little bit relieved when we came home and he decided and he told us that he was leaving because it was like you know well now we can find another guy who's you know the same as the other three of us so we're really lucky when Dan came along he's just amazing he's really reinvigorated the band and he's just really he's a really really passionate drummer which maybe we had been lacking in the past even at rehearsals you know he's just really really 100% into it and you can see the passion and it's just we sort of feed off the off his uh, off his vibe sometimes and and big day it was actually his, our first gig with Dan so it was kind of like no pressure man you know mm. your first gig with us is big day out <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, we're really, really happy with him and the way things are going. We won't mention the fact that there was meant to be another gig with him before that, but the car <laughs> broke down. Yeah, we're supposed well, to go. I mentioned it, didn't I? So. Yeah. Oh, damn it. Now I'm going to have to explain it. <laughs> so we, yeah, we had a Canberra gig and two of the guys made it. Then two of the other guys who had a lemon of a car or an unreliable car didn't quite make it. They made it to Albury. So it's a shame the gig wasn't in Albury. <laughs> and they ended up um, having an awesome party at a truck stop just past Aubrey rather than playing a show, which is quite unfortunate. Well, there was a band, one of the bands on my Facebook did a show in Aubrey recently and they loved it. They said it was brilliant. Yeah. So maybe next time you go to Canberra, you could book a show in Aubrey on the way. Yeah, well, hopefully there won't be a next time where we break down, but <laughs> <laughs> touch wood. It's all part of the adventure, isn't it? Yeah, these things happen. It's just rock and roll. And I said to Dan, like, really sorry, dude, because he, he was one of the guys that made it there. And But I was like, you know, it's this Arcane Saints, man, and like stuff like that happens to us, to us all the time. So get used to it, man. Just roll with it. Well, I'm going to make you work for your your radio time right now. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to. I'm not get taking you. my clothes off. <laughs> no, that's not until after the. Show. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm going to get you to do an acoustic for me. Oh, excellent! So, what are we going to hear first? This is an original song of mine. We haven't played it in Arcane Saints, and actually, the other guys in the band haven't even heard the song. But it's just one I wrote pretty recently, and it's called Cellophane Eyes. Here we go. This is Michael from Arcane Saints. <laughs>
Thank you very much. That was absolutely beautiful. And I hope the other guys were listening to that because I think they're going to love that song. I hope so too. I won't ask you what inspired it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I will. <laughs> uh, it's an absolutely beautiful song. And so then I did mention in the last talking bit about the album Turning the Tide. And you did just record that last year and you're going to America, but then you've got new songs like this one that you're still writing, do you know how long before you're going to actually get them out on a, an album or are you thinking of releasing a couple more singles in the next um, 12 months I'm not or too so? sure. We haven't really thought that far ahead yet. We're always writing. We're a band that everyone contributes to the writing process. So even now in our rehearsals and, and our gigs, we're playing new songs that aren't on the on the album. And I know personally I've probably written about four or five since the recording process, which is quite a relief because after Nashville, I can only speak for myself, but I was so burnt out from spending just working my ass off in, you know, um, in the studio and I came back and I honestly felt like I wasn't going to write another song ever again. I was just, oh, I don't even want to look at a guitar, you know, let alone feeling creative. But sure enough, you give it a couple of weeks and your batteries recharge and then you start, you know, playing a few chords and then next thing you know, you've got a song. But at the moment, we just finished a new heavier song um, so we're going to start putting that into the live set and then we're moving on to one of Steve's songs that he's, he's brought along because he actually wrote one on the album as well so yeah it's 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 good it's good having four people contribute because you know you've got a lot more material to choose from when you um, say like Steve's song and that do you not write the lyrics for them yeah yeah with Wrecking Ball he came along with the the riffs and I think I just put a melody to it and the the words yeah, but he's got a song at the moment he's written some lyrics for, so that's going to be interesting because I don't usually sing other people's lyrics, you know, from an Arcane, unless it's a cover, you know, mm. for Arcane Saints. So that's going to be quite fun. Looking forward to that. And well, I guess now, speaking of covers, I did see a review about your show at the Big Day Out on Facebook, and you did a cover at the Big Day Out. Yeah, we did. We played a Stone Table Pilot song. Yeah. Mm. And you... Sex type thing. It was called sex type thing, was it? Yeah, that's what it's called. How fun was it doing the Big Day Out, really? Like, did you... It was really fun to play Big Day Out because we hadn't played a, a big festival since MIDI Festival in China, which is probably a good two years ago now. So we were just hanging out to play another festival, just the atmosphere and just being really looked after backstage and having four or five guys working on your sound and another person doing your lights and just to have that kind of treatment again was just amazing and, and just having the big stage again where you can run around and really get into it. It was just so much fun. Yeah, we really, really loved it and hopefully there's going to be many more big doubts to come. <laughs> now you see, now I'm going to have to ask you about China, going to play in China. Did you just go there for the festival or did you do some more shows? Well, or? funny enough, um, we've, as Arcane Saints, we've, toured China twice just because we love it and we've got a good contact over there, a really good booker who looks after us. After the first time, we were invited to return there and play MIDI Festival, which is China's biggest rock festival. And that was just insane. It's probably one of the, if not the best, one of the top three gigs of my life just because they just go so crazy over there. And you can actually go on our website, arcanesaints.com, and have a look at the videos. And there's, some, there's a China tour montage and you can see some clips of the festival we played at. You know, like 10,000 people just going absolutely mental. Just a great, great feeling. But funny enough, Steve, with his previous band, he was actually over there at the same time playing the same festival. So that's how we met Steve. And we, we had a different bass player at the time. And then later on, when we were looking for another bass player, Steve came along. He was like, oh, you know, we met you guys in China. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, as you do. <laughs> we just casually met you in China. <laughs> so, this, yeah, it's kind of interesting uh, backstory to that. But, yeah, so, yeah, we hadn't... Uh, Steve included, we none of us had played a, a large festival since the China tour. So we we're just really, really stoked to, to play one again. Well, I reckon by the end of the year we might see you on one of the American ones too. I hope so. That would be nice. Yeah. 
Anyway, we shall move on to another song. You, uh, I was see, I had a good segue there, mm, and then and then it. you mentioned China, so I had to talk about China. <laughs> <laughs> but going back to cover songs, you want to do a cover song acoustically? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to play a Neil Young song called "The Needle and the Damage Done." Well, let's do that then. All right, I'm a lucky girl. <laughs> Again, that was beautifully sung. I won't say it was a beautiful song because I know you didn't write it. I mean, it is a beautiful <laughs> song. I actually really like that song. I wrote that one this morning. But uh, <laughs> So are you a big Neil Young fan? I am actually, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't say like a massive fan, but definitely, um, you know, he's made a massive contribution to the most of the bands that I listen to. He was like the godfather of grunge. Yeah, so he's, he's amazing. And I like his integrity as well. He's got so much integrity towards his music. You'll never, I don't think he's ever put up one of his songs for you know in an advertisement or anything like that, or accepted that kind of money for them. So you got to really respect him for that. Yeah, definitely. Mm. We should like start wrapping this up, I guess, soon. Is there something like? Well, you've done your fair share of interviews. I'm assuming. Is there something that you want to speak about? That- this is my first one. <laughs> I think we have evidence on YouTube that that's not true. <laughs> but no, well, is there something about Arcane Saints that you want to make sure that people listening who are fans or, you know, possibly new fans know about Arcane Saints? Just make sure you just jump on our website and a lot of people are really surprised that we're selling merch. You know, we've got merch on there and and uh, this sounds really bad. This sounds like I'm just trying to sell merchandise. <laughs> but no, we get asked all the time, like, don't you guys have T-shirts and things like that? And yeah, we do on our website. You go on our website. But wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So go on there and there's like anything really, the CDs, stubby holders, uh, yeah, a few things. And and also um, a lot of people said to us last year, the only criticism was that we weren't playing enough shows. So now we're like, we're consciously making an effort to, to play and play and play and if so keep up you know, website to see if, if we're playing near you soon. And make sure you check us out with our new drummer, Den, because I must say he's improved our live show just you know, just so much. He's just really, really amazing and he's just a great asset to the band. And Yeah, we're in a really good space right now. Yeah, so before you do head to America, are you planning to go up the East Coast or over to South Australia or anywhere like that or are you just not sure? Never say never. We're kind of limited because we'd have to, wherever we go, we have to drive and it has to be during a weekend as we can't get time off our day jobs and we can't fly because we can't afford it. But we are, even at the moment, we've got another Canberra gig booked for the one that we uh, didn't quite make last time and a few Melbourne shows coming up as well. But we're just going to keep trying and keep as busy as possible and just play, you know, whenever and wherever we can as much as possible. And do you know, like, can you tell us where any of these Melbourne shows are that you got coming up? When and where? No, because I've forgotten. Okay. But if you go on our web, because there's so many, you see, if you go on our website, there's a, there's a list of them. ArcaneSaints.com and check that out. And I suppose you have them on your events on your Facebook too, do you? Yeah. Actually, our next one's in Brunswick at the Brunswick Hotel. 
and it's um it's on a Sunday, but the Sunday is actually the Brunswick Street Party, so it should be a, quite a fun show. It's when Sydney Road just gets packed out with crazy people having a good time, so we're lucky enough to be playing right amongst it. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for coming down. It has been brilliant, and you are a fantastic singer, and Arcane Saints are a band that people are going to have to definitely keep their eyes open for because they're going to see a lot more of you. I hope so, and thank you very much for uh, supporting us and giving us so much of your time, Kate. We really appreciate it. Anytime. And what song was it we were going to finish on? Your Ocean. Your Ocean. <laughs> you say that like it's one word, Your Ocean. <laughs> your Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Which was the it first It sounds single. Australian, doesn't it? You, guys have, you know, you run your words together. <laughs> yeah. Your Ocean. You turned into a real locker. Yeah. It was Australia Day yesterday. I'm still celebrating. Australia Day. <laughs> Assuming I'm allowed to as a Kiwi. <laughs> it was actually two days I remember ago, someone but the public holiday was yesterday. Yeah, true, but I've still got today today off, don't I? But I remember someone saying, as a Kiwi, you shouldn't be allowed a public holiday on Australia Day. <laughs> you should have to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad you decided to make Australia home, even if it doesn't end up being up for a long time. Although, how long have you been here? Been here a long time now, seven over seven years. Great. Yeah. So you'll have spent, like, even when you go to... America eventually you will end up going there I'm sure mm-hmm. you'll still will you feel like an Aussie a Kiwi or a Pom <laughs> all three I guess rolled <laughs> into one how old were you when you left the UK um really young only about one so, so you don't really remember that you don't really feel like a Pom no I was taken against my will when I was a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> I had no choice in the matter. No one asked me. I suppose during cricket time like, lately you've been denying the pom bit anyway. It's like, yeah. I'm an ock, are you? I definitely, I don't know, I've got a lot of English family, but I definitely don't feel English. I guess I feel more of, more like a New Zealander, but yeah. only because I talk different to the rest of the guys in the band. But mm. And you grew up there. <laughs> yeah. But when you go to America, I'm sure you'll be taking a bit of Aussie with you. I was going to ask you then, it's absolutely irrelevant to anything, but do you even eat Vegemite? Yeah. Oh, good. Then you are an Aussie. Yeah. When I, when I run out of Marmite. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like Vegemite, actually. I do. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <laughs> do they eat it in New Zealand? Uh, more Marmite. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll have to. Um... But I eat Vegemite because, simply because it's the cheaper option at the supermarket. It tastes better. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And it tastes better. <laughs> this is not a sales. We're, we're starting to turn into salespeople first with your merch and now with that. But once again, it's arcanesaints.com or uh, facebook.com forward slash arcane saints. And make sure when you go and visit them on Facebook, you throw them a like. Yes. Thank you very much for making the trip down. Thanks, Kate. Thanks for having me. It was awesome. And hopefully you and maybe a couple of the other boys can come up one Thursday night and spend the whole night and play some tracks. And you don't have to play Australian music on Thursday night. You can okay. play anywhere in the world. I just realised... I don't think you realise what you're getting yourself into, but okay. Oh, I'm sure whatever it is I've been <laughs> <laughs> Had plenty of fun in the studio. <laughs> just hide um, anything breakable and expensive. I just realised that I should not have let you do the uh, cover that you did because it's not Australian. Oh, I'll it. forgive you because you did it live and you're Australian. Excellent. As we just as we And just it was sponsored by Vegemite. <laughs> And we're going to leave with Arcane Saints and Your Ocean and make sure you check out Turning the Tide. Thank you, Michael, and goodbye. Bye-bye.